Hello all, welcome back to the final part of chapter one, where we will be discussing the dynamical equations with vertical pressure coordinate. This extends on the discussion from last time where we began by deriving a form of the pressure gradient force, that is the force initiating motion of fluid parcels, which is valid for a vertical pressure coordinate. However, in order to get a complete set of atmospheric fluid equations for a vertical pressure coordinate, there are still several pieces of the puzzle missing we needed an expression for pressure gradient force, which was derived last time. But now we need some way to express the material derivative, some way to express vertical velocity. Recall that currently we are using vertical velocity w, defined as the change in vertical height z following a fluid parcel. Since we are now working on pressure-based vertical coordinates using pressure as the vertical label associated with fluid parcels, it may not be appropriate to use vertical velocity and height coordinates. We need an expression for the thermodynamic equation, that is some simplification of the thermodynamic equation that uses the hydrostatic balance assumption that has that we have so far relied on for our derivation in pressure coordinates. We'll need an expression for continuity or conservation of mass, and we will need a expression representing hydrostatic balance in a vertical pressure coordinate. Okay, so the horizontal momentum equations that we derived from last time in pressure coordinates with no viscosity appear on this slide. You'll notice on the left-hand side we have the change in horizontal velocity following the fluid parcel. And on the right-hand side, we have the two forces which are particularly dominant for large-scale mid-latitudinal weather systems, namely horizontal pressure gradient force, here expressed as the horizontal derivative of geopotential on constant pressure surfaces, and Coriolis force, in terms of the Coriolis parameter f to omega sine phi. In particular, notice that density is no longer present in this equation and consequently it is a simplified version of the horizontal momentum equations only relying on one external field, that is the geopotential field. Note that from here on out we will be using a subscript P in order to imply evaluations on constant pressure surfaces. So keep in mind when looking at horizontal derivatives on what vertical coordinate surface we will be taking these derivatives. Sometimes the subscript is omitted but the presence of geopotential should at least be an indicator saying that we are in vertical pressure coordinates. Let's talk about the material derivative in, the pressure, in vertical pressure coordinates. Recall before that we used a labeling of fluid parcels uh, for their location in terms of x, y, and z corresponding to their zonal position, meridional position, and vertical position. By taking the derivative of these positions with respect to time following the fluid parcel that is in the Lagrangian frame, we obtained the zonal velocity, meridional velocity, and vertical velocity associated with the fluid parcel. This idea was then used in conjunction with a Taylor series expansion or a multivariate chain rule in order to obtain an expression, an expression for the uh, the change of particular properties of the fluid parcel in the Lagrangian frame, that is following the fluid parcel, in terms of the changes in the Eulerian frame. <laughs> this expansion read as, for instance, the change in temperature following a fluid parcel on a constant height level is equal to the Eulerian change in temperature of the fluid parcel plus u times the change in temperature in the zonal direction x plus V times the change in temperature in the meridional direction Y, plus W times the change in temperature in the vertical direction. Um, this expansion then allowed us to relate the Lagrangian and Eulerian frames. Using an analogous construction, we can actually develop a similar formula for vertical pressure coordinates. Before we proceed, however, note that since we are using P in order to label our fluid parcels in the vertical direction instead of Z, it is more appropriate to define a vertical pressure velocity, here denoted by omega, which represents the change in pressure following the fluid parcel. This is analogous to the vertical velocity, which measures the change in the altitude or vertical coordinate following the fluid parcel. So using an analogous construction to previously for the material derivative, we observe that the only 
real change that occurs is with the last term in the material derivative. That is, instead of a dz dt times dt dz, we now have a dp dt times a dt dp. Um, now the dp dt is simply the change in pressure following the fluid parcel. This is the vertical pressure velocity that we just defined. And the dt dp is just the change in temperature with respect to vertical pressure. So the material derivative on pressure surfaces then simply looks like the expression that we have outlined here in this box. And it is very close to the expression that we had before for the material derivative on height surfaces. Okay, for vertical motion, we are interested in understanding how this vertical pressure velocity relates to the vertical height velocity, W. Well, for upward velocity, W has positive sign associated with it. That is, dz dt, which is the change in the z coordinate following the fluid parcel, is increasing, hence it is positive, and so the vertical velocity is positive. That is, a fluid parcel which is moving up has positive vertical velocity associated with it in height coordinates. But then the question is, what is the sign of omega, the vertical pressure velocity for upward motion? Well, we're working under the assumption that pressure decays exponentially with height. This implies that a fluid parcel which moves upwards in the atmosphere will move to a region of lower pressure, and hence the change in pressure for an upward moving fluid parcel is going to be negative. This suggests that the vertical pressure velocity for upward motion is negative. Note that this is opposite in sign to the vertical height velocity w associated with the fluid parcel. That is, positive w corresponds to negative omega, and po negative w corresponds to positive omega. So, simply emphasizing that here, omega negative for upward motion, and omega positive for downward motion. Make sure to keep that in mind whenever you see w and omega appearing in the equations that you're dealing with, and make sure not to confuse the two. Okay, we're now interested in developing a thermodynamic equation in pressure coordinates. Now, the thermodynamic equation that we had before is completely valid within the pressure coordinate system, since it simply relates the change in temperature following a fluid parcel to the change in density or the change in pressure following that fluid parcel. However, since we are working under the assumption of a vertically hydrostatically balanced atmosphere. We can use this uh, balance assumption in order to simplify the thermodynamic equation somewhat. So let's take the second form of the thermodynamic equation, namely Cp times the change in temperature following the fluid parcel, minus 1 over rho times the change in pressure following the fluid parcel is equal to diabatic heating J, and expand the temperature term out using the material derivative and use the definition of vertical pressure velocity as dp dt in order to simply substitute it into this second form of the equation. You'll notice then that the dp dt term disappears and instead we get an omega term in this expression. Expanding out the material derivative then gives us terms involving u, v, and omega as well. Notice that omega appears twice in this equation, and consequently we can collect those terms in order to simplify this equation further. So let's divide through by Cp and use ideal gas law in order to eliminate alpha. Recall alpha is simply 1 over the density, and so can be replaced with Rt over P. Um, and hence obtain a new form of the thermodynamic equation given by the Eulerian change in temperature at a particular location plus u dot the change in temperature in x plus v dot the change in temperature in y. Note that this is just the negative of horizontal advection of temperature. And then a final term proportional to the vertical pressure velocity with uh, coefficient dip dt minus rt over pcp. And the right hand side now corresponding to diabatic heating is given by j over cp. We define what is known as the static stability parameter as this quantity within the parentheses in this expression. This parameter will come back later as we're analyzing vertical stability within the atmosphere. 
However, with this definition, we can substitute it into our thermodynamic equation and hence obtain the simplified expression dy t dy t plus u dy t dy x plus v dy t dy y minus sp omega equals j over cp. Okay, so this is our new thermodynamic equation paired with our definition of the static stability parameter. Note that if there is no horizontal advection, then the time rate of change of the temperature at a location in the Eulerian frame, that is a fixed point in space, is simply driven by two factors. It is driven by diabatic heating, that is corresponding to radiation, condensation, and other forms of localized heating that are irreversible, and adiabatic rising and sinking that is adiabatic action on the fluid parcel corresponding to reversible work being performed on the fluid parcel leading to changes in volume of the fluid parcel. Okay, let's talk about the continuity equation. So in height coordinates we obtained a form of the continuity equation in the Lagrangian frame that looks like the change in density following a fluid parcel is equal to negative density times the divergence of the velocity field. Recall that what this equation said is that for a convergent velocity field, you will have compression of a fluid parcel. Compression of a fluid parcel will then drive up the density and lead to, uh, and lead to a increase in the density field. Compression here corresponding to negative divergence and a positive right-hand side of the continuity equation. If we have divergence of the velocity field, then del dot u is positive, and so the right-hand side of this equation is negative. This corresponds to expansion of fluid parcels, leading to an increase in volume, which at constant mass will then lead to a decrease in density. So the density then decreases in the presence of a divergent velocity field. We are now interested in deriving a simplified form of this continuity equation in pressure coordinates. It turns out that it's much more difficult in order to adapt the height-based version of this equation to a pressure-based equation than it is to simply derive the continuity equation from scratch. So let's derive it from scratch and see what we get. Okay, so we have a fluid parcel. Here we're working in the Lagrangian frame. Recall this is different from in height-based coordinates where we started by working with the continuity equation in the Eulerian frame. So in the Lagrangian frame, we have a rectangular prism fluid parcel with dimensions delta x, delta y, and delta z. The volume of the fluid parcel is given by delta x, delta y, delta z. Hydrostatic relationship is going is to be assumed to be valid over the uh, scales that we're working with, where we have delta p over delta z equals minus rho g. Here rho is some measure of the average density associated with the fluid parcel. We can substitute this in directly to the volume of the fluid parcel and obtain that the volume is equal to negative delta x, delta y, delta p, all over rho g. You might be confused as to why there is a negative sign in this expression, but remember that pressure decreases with height. So the difference delta p is actually a negative quantity for our fluid parcel, which has positive delta z associated with it. Hence, the volume is still positive. The cancellation of negatives occurs because we have a negative sign on the right-hand side and a negative delta p. Hence, from this expression, we then have that the mass of the fluid element is given by rho times volume, that is density times volume equals mass. Substituting in our expression for volume, we have mass equals negative rho delta x delta y delta p all over rho g. Or canceling out the rows, we have mass equal to negative delta x delta y delta p all over g. Now the conservation of mass principle says that the total mass of the fluid parcel is conserved following that fluid parcel. So there is no diffusion of mass through the surfaces of the fluid parcel. Well, if it's the case that mass is conserved following the fluid parcel, then th this can be written quantitatively as dm dt equals zero, where the d is the Lagrangian derivative or derivative following the fluid parcel. If that's the case, then we can divide through by mass and hence obtain that 1 over mass times dm dt is equal to 0. Well, let's substitute in our expression for mass from the previous slide and uh, into this expansion. Well, then we obtain g minus g 
over delta x, delta y, delta p, times ddt of delta x, delta y, delta p, all times minus 1 over g is equal to 0. Now, you might be somewhat confused as to how delta x, delta y, and delta p are changing in time, but remember these are the dimensions of the fluid parcel. If we have a velocity field which is compressing or expanding the fluid parcel, then these dimensions will change. This is deformation of the fluid parcel. Recall that deformation of the fluid parcel was the main driver behind the continuity equation that we derived in height-based coordinates. Okay, so let's use product rule in order to expand out this product of three terms, delta x, delta y, delta p. And hence we obtain the formula listed at the bottom of this slide. Then the question is, okay, now we have three derivatives that appear in this equation. The change in delta x following a fluid parcel, the change in delta y following the fluid parcel, and the change in delta p following the fluid parcel. So what do those mean? Well, you can think of it as follows. Delta x is the width of the fluid parcel. How does the width of the fluid parcel change? Well, it changes if there is a difference in the velocity of the edges of the fluid parcel. That is, if there is a difference in velocity on the right-hand side of the fluid parcel compared to the left-hand side of the fluid parcel, then some sort of deformation in the x direction will occur. If on the right-hand side of the fluid parcel the velocity is positive, and on the left-hand side that velocity is negative, then you will get expansion of the fluid parcel in the delta x direction. So this is really just the difference in velocity across the fluid parcel. So ddt of delta x is equal to u x plus delta x minus u of x, or the change in velocity in, across that distance delta x. Well, if we substitute that in and observe that the delta y delta p divide out, divides out of the first term, the delta x delta p divides out of the second term, and the delta x delta y divides out of the third term, then we obtain a simple expression, delta u over delta x plus delta v over delta y plus delta omega over delta p equals zero. In the limit of small fluid parcels, these deltas are then replaced with partial derivative symbols and hence we obtain di u di x on constant pressure surfaces plus di v di y on constant pressure surfaces plus di omega di p is equal to zero. This represents our new continuity equation along pressure surfaces. Interestingly, note that this new continuity equation does not involve time derivatives and does not contain any reference to the density field. In fact, it only contains quantities associated with the velocity field. So this is a diagnostic equation which restricts how the velocity field can be defined at any point within the domain. Namely, omega, if u and v are given, then omega must satisfy this relationship at a particular point in the domain. The simplicity of this equation is one of the chief advantages of the isobaric system, and the fact that we have eliminated one of the thermodynamic variables from this relationship. The ease of computing vertical pressure velocity is another benefit. In particular, observe that this equation can be rearranged very readily in order to obtain omega. Okay, so our last equation that we need to then derive is the hydrostatic equation. Well, we have a form of the hydrostatic equation in height coordinates. If we simply invert this equation, we will then obtain an expression that has the pressure derivative on the bottom in the denominator, or it is the uh, coordinate with which we are taking the derivative with respect to. So flipping around this equation then gives us di z di p equals minus 1 over rho g. Um, we bring the g over to the left-hand side. And note that gz is simply equal to the geopotential. And we also use the ideal gas law in order to eliminate the density from this equation. You'll notice that it's a common theme of our approach so far with pressure gradients to eliminate density as much as possible. By applying this, the ideal gas law, we then obtain the hydrostatic equation in pressure coordinates, which is the derivative of the geopotential with respect to pressure must equal minus rdt over p. This equation is a replacement for the vertical momentum equation, and it also allows us to relate changes in geopotential to temperature and pressure in the vertical atmosphere. 
So the complete set of dynamical equations that we then obtain in pressure coordinates is given as follows. We have the momentum equation, which appears like the momentum equation in height coordinates. Here the momentum equation is only used to describe horizontal velocities. It has a, it only includes pressure gradient force, which looks like minus grad sub p of geopotential. Coriolis, which looks like Fk cross uh. Here we have neglected viscous forcing and we have neglected curvature from these equations. These will need to be added in later if they are, if they are required. We have a hydrostatic relationship, which relates the change in geopotential uh, to temperature and pressure. We have a continuity equation, which is the, a diagnostic equation relating the terms of the velocity field, uv and omega. And we have a thermodynamic equation, which explains how the, Eulerian temp the change in temperature in the Eulerian frame can be related to the velocity field and the diabatic heating. We have the ideal gas law, which can be used in order to derive rho later on if need be. And we have a material derivative in pressure, uh, on pressure surfaces, which appears like our material derivative on height surfaces, except replacing the last term, which on height surfaces was W D D Z with an omega DDP. This then represents the complete set of pressure e coordinate equations. You'll notice that these equations are significantly simpler than the ones that we dealt with with height-based coordinates and will be a key starting point for future analysis of the behavior of atmospheric flows. Thank you.